HTML, Python, SQL. There's a variety of really useful programming languages, but they're all so dull. It's all just typing, numbers, letters, and symbols. I want something more. I want to be able to code using Lego. So I created a programming language that lets me do that, where the source code and the output are both Lego models. To start, let's open up Studio. Studio is an application that's used to make digital Lego models. And we're using this because we can take a file from Studio, run it through the interpreter that I wrote, and then put it back into Studio. I've tried making real life Lego models, but I can't figure out how to get them into the computer. First, we place two of these tooth pieces facing forward like this. Now we use these because they're asymmetrical, so the interpreter knows the correct orientation. Now, let's put a piece down. The placement command is this one by three plate, and we put it that way. Now let's place the generic two by two brick. So we put it there, and let's make it blue. Now one brick by itself is boring, so let's put another one. But we can't do that quite yet. This first brick was placed at the origin, at the coordinates 0, 0, 0. But the computer is still set to the origin, so if we place something else, it will go inside the first one. And we need to keep this PG. So first, let's tell the computer to move. The movement command is a 1 by 2 plate, and we put it like this for the x-axis, this for the y-axis, and this for the z-axis. Now let's put a piece on top of the blue one, so that'll be y-axis for up. And the blue brick is three plates high, so we want to move up three. So we use this piece to say, here's a number. And then we write that number in binary using the studs with a hole as zero and the ones without as one. So three is positive, so first we put a zero. And three is equal to one plus two. Now we're ready to place another piece. So placement command and piece. And let's make this one purple. So let's place one more piece. Now, instead of going up, let's go to the left this time. So the left is in the x-axis, so we put x. And then how far? Well, this brick is two units wide, so we'll go two, and then it's negative because it's left. So one for negative, and two is zero plus two. So there we go. Now we can place a piece and put a brick. Let's make this one. Okay, now the program's done, so we can export it, run it through the interpreter, and then we import it. And here we go. A blue brick with a purple one on top and a pink one to so the So those are the basics of this language. Placement and movement. And you can put a bunch of them together, like in this program, where the output is a little model of a cat. Now what you may notice here is that each different piece type is a different color but I've just done that to make it easier to read the code. The color doesn't actually matter, which is why I was able to pick this sort of warm but color But that scheme. also means you could create a program like this one that is just plain gray. It's so boring. Almost as boring as those text-based languages we were talking about earlier. But the output of this one is a wonderful rainbow. A nice thing about this gray program is that it uses some of the best functionalities of the language, and that is arithmetic, if statements, and while loops. So let's take a look at that. So we'll set aside the placement and movement for now. What we want to do is create a variable and set it to zero. And then we say while that variable is less than some number, here we've gone with 120. Then the first thing we want to do is add one to the variable so that we don't get stuck in a never ending loop. And then just bring the placement back over here. So we're going to do this placement 128 times. But before we finish this, we do want to move up three at the end so that nothing goes inside this pink piece. Now end the while loop, and we're done with this And this program. is what the output looks like. It is this huge staircase of pieces. So these while loops are really useful for placing a lot of pieces without having to write a very long program. So that means that we can create this program, which is 600 pieces long, but its output is six and a half thousand. It creates a Sierpinski triangle. What is that? So you start with one triangle, and then you make two copies of it and place them below to make a larger triangle. And then you repeat. So you make two copies of your larger triangle and place them below. And then you repeat again, and again, and again, and again. Now this program here is my favorite one. This is a graphing calculator. 
So right now it's set to graph y equals x squared. And this is what the output of that looks like. But we can change the function. So we remove this bit, which says y equals x squared, and we replace it with this, which is y equals x cubed over 100 minus 2x. And this is the output of that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Now to pick these all up.